morning, CPC. Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord? So on Monday, we will celebrate Veterans Day. And when you look in the dictionary that says a veteran is a person who has long experience in a particular field, are there any veterans that we have who have served in the military? Could you stand? Amen. Thank you for your service. So I think it's pretty fitting um, that we are talking about veterans and celebrating Veterans Day um, because we have somebody in our midst who is the veteran of the Most High. He has long experience in saving and keeping people. And so today we just want to lift up his name. So we're going to ask everyone to stand as we welcome God's presence into this place. Welcome you today to worship for those of you who are here and those of us or you who are worshiping online we welcome you because today is a very special day we begin with a word of praise from David I will extol you my God O King and I will bless your name forever and ever every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Let's bow our heads for the invocation. Father, today we take the time during this time of thanksgiving to slow down, to stop, and to give you thanks. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for the little things that we enjoy, for air, for water, for the ability to see and to hear. We bless your name, O oh God, for the animals that are around us, the birds that fly, and dogs that love us so unconditionally. We bless your name, O oh God. But more than all, we bless you because of the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ. We celebrate this today and give you all the praise and the glory, both now and forevermore. Let God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. come to an hour of prayer, and so we would like those who have a burden on their hearts, if you could kneel reverently where you are, while I approach the throne of God, 
and ask his presence for us all. shared with us in your word, the words of the Apostle John. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we should have the petitions that we asked of him. Holy Father, what a wonderful, beautiful promise to know your will and to pray confidently that you will hear us. We thank you, Holy Father, that you have given gifts unto men when you went to heaven. And today, many gifted individuals, young people, have come to bless us and to praise your name with their gifts of singing. We pray for each one that they will pray praise you in a way that will bring glory to your name. We thank you for bringing us safely here. We thank you for the love that you have shown toward us and giving us your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for just the desire to know you. We thank you for the gift of forgiveness and we pray, Father, that you would forgive us of the sins which we have committed this week. We praise you for the victories that you've given us over temptation this week. We praise you for the manifold blessings that you've given us each day. And there, Lord, there are also sorrows that we have to share. There are some among us who have lost family members. Death is still alive upon this earth. The enemy has brought some to the grave, and so we pray for peace and the family members who are still here. We pray that that pain that is there may subside over time and that you will draw close through the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray for the speaker of the hour as he will present to us the word of truth. He has prepared the message for us that you will provide some, some portion of the word to each and every one of us, that we will have that portion of truth which we need to encourage us today and during this upcoming week. Thank you for the musicians. We thank you again for your love for your son, Jesus Christ. Bless us now as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we look forward to that day when you shall come. For we ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.
service where all of our little ones get to come for the children's story. Come on down. Jesus and me, Jesus and me, we are the best of friends. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Jesus and me, Jesus and me, we are the best of friends. Oh, he's there when I wake up, there when I wake up, there when I lie down, there when I lie down, there when I need him, there when I need him, he's always around. Ba -bum -bum -bum. Jesus and me, Jesus and me, we are the best of friends. Ba -bum -bum. to church with me today. What's this? A mirror. Now, have any of you ever held a flashlight or shone a flashlight on a mirror to see what happens? Or maybe you sit out in the sun and held it up? Yes? All right. So for those of you who haven't, we're going to do a little demonstration, okay? Let's try. My friend here is going to shine the light on the mirror. I'm going to hold the mirror up to the light. I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right. Now, do you see the light that's moving? Yes. See, I'm holding the mirror up to the light, and then I can re the mirror reflects the light onto all of you. Now, if I turn the mirror away from the light, would I be able to reflect the light? No, or if Mr. David blocked the light, if he put his hand over the light, would I be able to reflect the light? No, I would not. Now, in today's um, sermon, we're going to talk about John. John, God, before Jesus came, God sent John to reflect the light. And who is the light? God. Jesus. Jesus is the light. So God sent John to tell people to be a witness and to tell everyone from his experience who Jesus is or who Jesus was going to be when he came. And just like God sent John to tell the Jews about Jesus, as Christians, God wants us to tell our friends and our neighbors and everybody that we come into contact with about Jesus. God wants us to reflect Jesus' light. Now, um, we know Jesus is, when we reflect Jesus, we know he is kind, he is patient, he is love. And 1 Corinthians 13 tells us what that love looks like, right? Now, just like in order to reflect the light, I had to hold the mirror up to the light, right? In order for us to be good reflector, reflections of Jesus, we need to keep looking to Jesus. We need to know what he is like. So we need to read about him. We need to talk to him in prayer. We need to take some time in nature to see all the things that he has created. And we need to listen to what he tells us. And in order to be a good reflector, we need to get rid of things that block the light. See, if David blocked the light, I wouldn't be able to reflect it with this mirror. So if anything or any person tries to keep you from Jesus, we need to put those things aside because we want to be good reflections of who he is. Matthew, I have someone who's going to read a text for me. Matthew 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city located on the hill cannot be hidden. All right. 
And Matthew 5, 16 says, in the same way, let your light so shine before people so that they can see your good deeds and give honor to your Father in heaven. So boys and girls, as you go through this week, I want you to remember that you are the mirrors of Jesus. We need to reflect who Jesus is. And in order to be good mirrors of Jesus, we need to spend time to, see, to know who he is, and we need not to let anything block us from getting to know him. All right? I need two prayers. Cameron and Charlie. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you, God. Thank you that nobody got in any accidents. And thank you that we got to church safely. And amen. Dear God, thank you for everyone getting to church safely. Thank you for us acting good and, um, and reflecting on you. No, you reflecting on us. We pray that everyone is safe and nothing happens to anybody like harm. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Jesus and me, Jesus and me, we are the best of friends. But I'm Amen. Um, this is the time when we worship God with our gifts, and the deacons will soon come by to pick them up. You know, um, the old folk used to say, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings and see what wonderful things God has done. I would like to suggest this good counsel for us too. And I pray that as we count our blessings and we run out of time counting, that that will move us to be generous in our response to God. Before the deacons come, let us bow our heads. Almighty God, we're so thankful for the many ways in which you've been good to us. There is no words to say thanks, but we are grateful. We ask, O oh God, that you will accept these gifts as a small token. Bless them, magnify them, and designate them to expand your kingdom only. In Jesus' precious name and for your sake we pray. Amen.
Our musical guests today really do not quite require an introduction, but I must at least briefly introduce them as world champions from Oakwood University. They have traveled worldwide singing and representing Christ and the Adventist Church and have been such a blessing. So we just welcome you and are so happy to have you with us here today.
Happy Sabbath. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it's glad to be here with you guys, especially with the Aeolians. And as we minister in song, we hope that the messages of the song will actually speak to your hearts and, you know, bring someone or bring you back to Christ or bring you closer to him. The song that I'm about to sing is, He Hideth My Soul in the Cleft of the Rock. And I hope that it's a blessing to you. His 
His perfect salvation, His wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty
kingdom of heaven is like a man taking a journey into a far country and gave talents to his own servants. Some he gave five, and they have used it wisely. We have two or one, let us use it wisely. So let us stand for the word of God. We're reading from the book of John, chapter one, reading verses six to 14. And let us have a word of prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for your word. Grant us now your spirit that it may sink deep in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You may be seated.
I don't know about you, CPC, but I never get tired of hearing and singing that song. Holy, holy, holy. I want to thank the Aeolians for their wonderful ministry of music. Can we say amen? amen. Let's give it up for our young people one more time. Thank you so much. We just get a glimpse of what glory will be like when the angels, thousands upon thousands and tens of thousands are seeing holy, holy to the Lamb of God. So thank you all for ushering us in to the time of our word today. From today, November 9th through November 30th, the general theme of our sermonic series will be 21 days of thankfulness. Is that all right? 21 days of thankfulness. Can I parenthetically stop for a moment and just come close to you for a second? If there is anyone here today that was a student in your life before and, and you had a big test and, and you didn't really study like you really knew you should have and somehow you ended up getting an A on the test, are you thankful? Is there someone else who at one point in your life, not right now because you got a lot of money, but at some point in your life, you had more month than money and somehow God was gracious to you and you made it through. Can anyone else say amen? amen. Maybe there's someone here today, someone here today that you had an illness or a disease and the doctor said, Richard, that you're not going to make it, but God healed you of that disease, and you're sitting in CPC today. Can someone say amen? amen? And so we are going to be spending the next 21 days this time of thankfulness. I thank Elder Griffith for reading so well the sermonic verses. For the sake of emphasis today, I want to have us to read the key verses of John chapter 1, we'll read together from the screen, verse 11 through 14. Let's read all together from the clear word version of the Bible. All eyes on the monitor, let's read together. He came to his own chosen people, yet they didn't even recognize him. But to those who did receive him and believed in him, he extended the privilege of becoming the children of God. They were born again, not from ancestors, nor through man's will, but totally through the power of God. So the word of God became a man and lived among us. Continue. We saw that light with our own eyes and knew he was born from God. Jesus was gracious, kind, and full of light and truth. If you are grateful for the light and truth of Christ, can you say amen? amen? For the next few moments, loved ones, I want to speak with you from the subject, the thank you challenge. The thank you challenge. Can you do me a fervor, favor, please, and turn to the person to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, just real quick. Use your loudest preacher's voice. And just tell them, are you up for the challenge? Go ahead. Tell them next to you, are you up? Are you up for the challenge? Are, are you up for the challenge? Are, are you up for the challenge? Will you jo join me, loved ones, as we invite God's anointing on his message today? Father, in this season of giving thanks, Broaden now our perspective. Challenge us, if you please. But don't, don't leave us there, Lord, but give us encouragement. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, honor, and glory. For we ask it all in Christ's name. And all the people of God said, are you up for the challenge? In recent years, we have been bombarded by all kinds of fun challenges. There is one thing that, that, that all of these fun challenges have in common. The participants must take some form of action. 
the ice bucket challenge. Anybody, just by show of hands, anybody ever participated in the ice bucket challenge? It doesn't matter what time of the year, Mark, if it's a summer, if it's a spring, when somebody pours a bucket of ice on top of your head, it's cold, isn't it? But in the ice bucket challenge, the person must fill up this bucket with ice water and, and then they pour it on their head. And then there is the blindfolded makeup challenge. The person, the person must blindfold themselves and do their very best to try to apply makeup while they're blindfolded. Come on, saints. And then, then there's the popsicle and paper cup challenge. You see, the person uses only these two items to build the highest tower they possibly can. And, and the winner is the person, you guessed it, that builds the tallest tower. Are you with me? And then there is the whisper challenge. The person puts on headphones, I'm not talking the weak, the, the, the really, the Bose headphones, some really solid headphones where you put them on, you can't hear nothing. They put them on, and without being able to hear a thing, they, they try to decipher the lyrics to the various songs of the other person. Now, of the more than 300 of the fun challenges we've been able to identify, these are just some of the fun challenges that all of you can enjoy with your family and your friends over the holidays. Now, I remember, I remember celebrating Thanksgiving when I was a senior, Brother Damon, a senior in high school. We were over my grandmother's house, and, and, and I, I tell you, we used to call her Mommy. And we had a great time. Anybody ever had a great time at Thanksgiving? I think some more hands should come up. Anybody ever had a great time doing Thanksgiving? We had a ball. And the beautiful thing is her cooking was off the chain. And I know we're getting close to eating our, our Sabbath meal, and you, you feel your stomach. It may be kind of rumbling a little bit. I'm not trying to, to agitate you in terms of your hunger, but, but at that meal, we were sitting around with my cousins, my aunties and uncles, and we had everything from candied yams to collard greens to mashed potatoes and gravy to, to, to sweet peas to sweet potato salad to cranberry sauce. We had, listen, we had baked, grilled, and fried turkey. And, and, and yes, and yes, for all you, all you flesh-eating cops out there, at that time, I wasn't a vegetarian. Come on, saints. So essentially, I was in literally in hog heaven. And it was back. Somebody would get it. It was back in 1985, and we were watching the Dallas Cowboys play the Arizona Cardinals. During halftime, Mommy asked me and my cousin to, listen, go down the street, Brother Meshach, go down the street. She said, listen, go down the street to get a couple more bags of ice at the local corner store. Now, you have to understand, loved ones, I was totally full after completely demolishing all that good cooking. And I was having such a great time watching the game, laughing and lallygagging with my cousins and my brothers. And so I recall how I felt when mommy took off her white apron, wiped her brow, and asked me and my cousin to get up from that comfortable couch and go down the street to pick up some bags of ice. It's like she was gently challenging me and my cousin to, to prove our thanks by doing this for her. And I remember thinking, child of God, I remember thinking, and I thank mommy for making us feel so special. We, we felt like VIP. She, she did everything she could to make sure we had everything we needed and more. Such a wonderful guest. We were just treated like royalty. But I really didn't feel like getting off that comfortable couch, going to the corner store during halftime to pick up some bags of ice. Are you with me, Richard? I didn't feel like it. It made me wonder, was I really thankful? 
In other words, was I really up for the thank you challenge? And and like the young people say today, was I low-key ungrateful? Was Was I being extra for not really wanting to go to the store and pick up these bags of ice? As I think back on it, I felt a little bad because when one of my brothers, my second brother, Daryl, and one of my other cousins, they stepped up and said, Mommy, we'll go to the corner store and we'll get the ice for them. How many know, how many know that there are times in our Christian journey, hear me, when we say we are thankful and, and when we say we are grateful what God has done for us, And when we say we are up for the thank you challenge, but our actions and our overall posture says something different. We tell our community services leader that we are grateful to wear that white and red Servolution t-shirt. And we're grateful to be a part of the ministry that feeds the homeless, a ministry that supports many in need. But when we get that reminder email, We don't even open the email, much less respond to it. And when we let, we get to the place, we let people know, you know, it's it's such a blessing to be a part of the higher calling choir. And we, we are so glad to be thankful to sing praises of Zion before the church. But after a long, stressful week, after dealing back and forth with 495 in the Beltway, after dealing with a stressful boss and stressful colleagues at work, all of a sudden, there are myriad distractions that get in our way and we don't find our way to rehearsal. What we actually do shouts out to us, loved ones, that we are not really up for the thank you challenge of being grateful. See, how many know that that being thankful involves a level of action? Are you with me so far? A blind boy, listen to this story. A blind boy sat near the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. There were only a few coins in the hat at that time just some spare change as as people rushed and hurried past. A man was walking by the blind boy and, and he took a few coins from his pocket and he dropped them into the hat. He then took the sign, Taime, took the sign, turned it around and wrote some words on the sign. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would see the new words. Then he, he literally thought about it for a second. And then soon the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were, were giving money to the blind boy now. That afternoon, the man, the man who had changed the sign, returned to see how things were going now. The boy recognized his footsteps and asked, were you the one who who changed the wording on my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but I said it in a different way. He says, I wrote, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Loved ones, both signs spoke the truth. But the first sign simply said the boy was blind. While the second sign conveyed to everyone walking by just how grateful they should be to see. Come on and say amen. You see, this man, this man issued the thank you challenge to everyone passing by. Each person who who passed by this blind boy was, was confronted with the gripping reality. What are they willing to do to demonstrate just how thankful they really are? How many know that, 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 that being truly grateful involves some form of action? 
one of the biggest contradictions, one of the biggest conundrums in our day is all the people who are talking about it but not being about it. As we look at today's text, we, we see some key actions that, that signify when we are truly thankful. In fact, I want to highlight a few points and I'll get out of your hair. First, we are really thankful when we live by believing in Christ. Verse 11 and 12, the Bible says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as did what? Received him, to them gave the right to become children of God, to those who do what? Believe in his name. You see, there is, hear me, loved ones, there is no way the first disciples who were mentioned later in this first chapter of John, there is no way that Andrew, Peter, Nathaniel, and Philip could experience the power of God without first receiving Christ and then believing in his name. Just imagine for a moment, imagine what would have happened if John the Baptist didn't receive and then fully believe in the name of Yahshua Messiah. When the priests and, and the Levites asked him, who are you? Imagine if John the Baptist had not answered in verse 20 this way, and he confessed and he did not deny, but confessed that I am not the Christ. Imagine if John the Baptist had not responded in verse 23 by saying in verse 23, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make what? Straight the way of the Lord. This fearless man of God spoke straight truth to power. I may get in trouble, Pastor Rue. I may get in trouble for saying this. I, I may be stripped of my role as head elder of this church, but, but I believe there, there are not enough seven-day Adventist believers in our conference, in our country, in our world that are standing firmly up for things that are straight up and down. There are too, there are too few professed members of, yea, the remnant church, who are, holding, who are holding fast to things that are truly aligned with the real intent of God's word. We don't have enough believers in 2019 who are taking courageous action in the space of racism and sexism and social justice. We don't have enough believers who, who see, listen, who see a major boulevard in Kansas City named after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in January of this year and then nine months later have it removed by folk who don't look like the people in that community or even live there. We have too many muted voices in our churches who are afraid to take a stance on what role women should play in the church. We have a lack of young people, come on y'all, a lack of young people who are not standing up to the long-held traditions that don't necessarily line up with the truth in God's word. Loved ones, I believe there are not enough of us who are willing to take the thank you challenge. We need more men, women, and young folk who are willing to, willing to allow their allegiance and their belief in Christ to trump everything else and everyone else. Can I hear you say amen? God's servant says in education, page 57. Let's read that together. It's on the screen. Act like you have never read this before. Be humble. I know you know it. The greatest one of the world is what? The one of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their inmost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Can you say amen? We need more courageous people in our world today. Am I right, saints? 
We need more people who are not concerned about the left nor the right nor the middle, but the truth. More people who are willing to put their life on the line for the sake of the gospel. And second, not only do we know we are truly thankful when we live by believing in Christ, but we also know we are really thankful when we live by obeying the Holy Spirit. You see, the point is clear in our text. Speaking of those who, who, who believe in Christ, verse 13 says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. How many know, get this, how many know that it is possible to believe in Christ and yet not obey the leading and the prompting of God's spirit? You see, John is building a wonderful case that a true believer is not one in name only. An overcoming Christian doesn't merely wear the name of Christ. A victorious saint adds obedience to their faith. Come on and say amen. Last summer, I remember being awakened at 7 a.m., by very loud honking sounds. Honk, honk, it was just disturbing. 7 a.m., I had been up very late the night before, and, you know, it's one of those things, any little thing can annoy you. And so this annoying honking sound got on my last nerve. Are you with me so far? And because the honking wouldn't stop, it just kept going, I, I hustled downstairs to see who it was and what they wanted. And when I opened the door, it was the trash truck. As soon as I saw the trash truck, I remembered instantly that we have a whole bunch of garbage running overflowing in our garage that needed to be taken out. So I rushed to bring the trash that was in the garage out to the truck. And to my surprise, get this, loved ones, to my surprise, the truck driver got out of the truck. Has that ever happened to anybody before? The trash truck driver saw me approaching and got out of the truck. And with a big smile on his face, he handed me a simple track that was titled The Power of Love. My friends, I will never, never forget this moment, never forget this encounter for all the days of my life. This trash truck driver didn't know anything about me whatsoever. Didn't know me from Adam. Just would see me from time to time, every so blue moon. Didn't know anything about me. He didn't know that I've given Bible studies. He didn't know I was already a believer. He didn't know that I preached from the pulpit from time to time. Had no idea about me. None of that mattered to this trash truck driver. The only thing that mattered to him was putting his belief into action. Come on, y'all. This man obeyed God's spirit by performing a random act of kindness and then by spreading the message of God's love, the power of each one reaching one, the power and importance of witnessing for Christ, the power of living such a life, whereas the Peter says in the word, your life is a living epistle read by men. This truck driver was, was following the model of John the Baptist, as we see in verse 7, which says, this, it says in verse 7, this man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. CPC, you know I love you with all my heart. This is my church family. Been here since 1996. But the probing challenge to all of CPC is plain to see. Do our actions show forth our belief? If, if our actions, hear this, if our actions were evidence of guilt in a court of law, 
would there be enough evidence to convict us? In other words, can people here in Alexandria and throughout our region, can they, can they observe our daily walk when, when they put two or three cones out in front of the sidewalk, signaling I have guests that are coming to visit on Sabbath day? Do our actions correspond to our belief? Do we bypass their message, Brother George? Do some of us, Lord help us, remove the cones and park there anyway? Can our neighbors see our gratefulness? Can they see it reflected through the spirit of the living God living inside of us? Has our gratefulness for what God has done for us, has, has it translated into helping others draw closer to Christ? And so, yes, we, we, we know we are truly thankful when, when, when we live by believing in Christ. We, we are sure that we are thankful when we find ourselves living by obeying the Holy Spirit. But thirdly, we know we are thankful for real when we live by giving God the glory every single moment of our life. Every single moment of our life, we know we are thankful to God when people see us and all they can sense coming out of our pores is giving God the glory. Let's look at verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. You see, a key to giving God the glory is doing whatever you can to constantly behold his glory. The Bible says, by beholding what happens, we become change. The more, I know this by personal example, by, by the more time we spend with God, the more we see just how much he is infinitely more than us. When you're in awe with the otherness of God, when he's so foreign from your proclivities, when, when you start meditating on who God is and you see yourself far in the distance. In fact, the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 6, verse 1, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe did what? Fill the temple. See, Isaiah was, was overwhelmed by the glory and the splendor of God. And as, as he continued to behold God's majesty, he said in verse 5, he says in verse 5, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You see, one of the challenges that we face as believers in 2019 is we too often fix our gaze on things and people of this world. We get sidetracked by, by comparing ourselves among ourselves. Many of us are too, Lord help us, too preoccupied with keeping up with the proverbial Joneses and not being tied up and tangled up in Jesus. How many know that that can easily happen? In this very competitive, capitalistic society that we live in, there is constant pressure to push and stretch and strain ourselves to the limit, especially if we have a desire to optimize our success in this life. Am I right? It's such a trap getting pulled into the noise of, of succeeding and, and competing at all costs. Sacrificing time with your kids and sacrificing time in the word and sacrificing time you could be spending helping people in need. You're driving that mouse wheel. You're doing everything you can to climb that next ladder. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. But you're not prioritizing action on behalf of the kingdom of God. 
And see, we begin, the more we focus in this arena, help us, Lord, we begin to lose sight of beholding God's glory. And when we lose the ability to, to really see God in all his magnificence, and when we lose the ability to see God in all his awesome holiness, when you stop humbly realizing that just how much our God is worthy to be praised, when, when you lose this type of sight, when, when you lose this type of vision, you then lose the appetite to give God glory. When, when you forget about where you came from, when, when, when you start sitting high and looking low, when you begin snubbing your nose at someone who's struggling with something that you used to struggle with in the past, when you stop saying amen and thank you, Jesus, as loud as you can in church because no one else matters, when you start smelling yourself, it gets harder and harder to find a reason to give God the glory. How many know that's the truth? The more you start focusing on yourself and you begin to lose sight of the needs of other people around you, you are setting yourself up to get to a place where you start, it gets harder and harder to behold the glory of God. It gets harder and more difficult to see your right relationship with you and the holy God. When you get to the place, when you're constantly reminded, woe is me, I'm undone. When you begin to see how holy God really is and how he demands righteousness, obedience. When you see the difference and you remain humble and your key focus, Keith, is on what can I do to help others? In need. As I begin to close, I want to have the music to play a little softly. I want to tell you about an important meeting I was in last fall. It was a meeting with many of the significant leaders in the greater Baltimore region who were being interviewed by myriad TV, radio, and print reporters. This occurrence, a special occurrence on a unique collaboration with various leaders in the community to offer fresh protein and a variety of wraparound services for those in need in that community. In fact, there are, in that community, Central Maryland, there are more than 350,000 people who don't have access to fresh protein in a variety of social needs. So this group was convening, of leaders convening, and while we were talking among each other, one of the most respected CEOs in our group, this gentleman just happens to be named more than once one of the most influential leaders in the world. And he, while we were talking, he slipped away and, 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 and from that moment, we didn't know where he was. We saw him. He stooped down to this little eight-year-old boy. He began to ask the boy questions. The boy was loving it, all this attention from this big-time guy. Then he slipped him his business card. He said, give this to your mom. His mom was over on the other side of the room. And it just so happened that this highly revered African-American leader is one of my mentors, and during our last conversation, he shared with me, and we began to well up with tears in our eyes as we talked about this. He began to share with me that this young boy is now part of one of his institution's flagships outreach programs. You see, this leader was demonstrating the importance of being about it and not just talking about it. The outcome that was so awesome, it was simple act of random kindness. And it reminded me that one of the best ways to give God glory is to relentlessly focus 
on the needs of others. Rick Warren in the book, Purpose Driven Life says, the very first sentence is not about you. If you wake up, Carlson, thinking about my agenda, what's important to me, what will I get out of this? You're off focus. When we are truly, truly thankful for what God has done in our lives, we never lose sight of our purpose. We never shy away from taking the thank you challenge. Here's my challenge for all of you in the congregation. Here's my challenge to those worshiping online. I want this challenge to be taken from today through the end of November. 21 days of thankfulness. Here's my challenge. Could you consider doing this? Take the time to record your random acts of kindness every single day during this 21 day period. Large and small, just record it. I sent an email message to give condolences to a friend. I sent flowers to my grandmother who was dealing with some challenges. I sent a text to my professor who's struggling in something personal in her family life. Whatever those acts of kindness are, I'm asking you all to take up this thank you challenge one per day, at least one per day over the next 21 days. Now here's the thing, I want all of you to place a word or a phrase or a sentence next to whatever that act of kindness was, expressing how you felt or how you feel by extending that act of kindness. Oh, it blessed my soul. Oh, I was reminded of how good God is. Oh, I'm so humbled that I'm not in the same situation. Thank God for his goodness. Whatever you're feeling right next to that act of kindness, however you're feeling. Is that clear, saints? And what we will do as a church here at CPC, what we will do is figure out a way to have some sort of collage of some of these things in an anonymous way, some collage that captures the sense of what people have been doing during these 21 days and how they've been impacted by those random acts of kindness. And if there is someone here today who is saying, Elder, I am thankful for the message today. I was reminded of how good God is to me and my need to be thankful. If there's someone here today who's simply saying, Elder, I need to take some action today. You're saying I've been convinced that there is time out for playing with this thing. I need to take action. If you're saying I want to draw closer to Christ, if you're saying, hey, I know I need to be baptized, I need to begin studying so I learn and be baptized, or if you're saying I, I need to be re-baptized, if that is you today, while the saints have their heads bowed and their eyes closed, if, if you're a person saying today, even now, in the balcony in the main sanctuary, elder, I heard the word. I want to live. I want to live of life of service. I, I want to live a life having faith in Christ. I want to live a life of beholding the glory of God. And you want to take that first step of action. I'm asking you to be bold, be brave. Slip out of the aisle. Come down to the front. The elders will do our part in helping you to get on the journey of Christian faith. Is there such a one? The saints are praying even now. The saints are praying. Is there someone who's saying today, this is my time? And you're literally at a place of needing to take action. As we pray, even as we pray, if you are compelled in your spirit, if you're compelled in your spirit to come forward, we're going to make room for you. Shall we pray, saints? Father, we thank you so much for this season of thanksgiving. We thank you so much for this reminder of how do we know we are really thankful when our actions demonstrate what we really believe. Lord God, we pray that there is one, even if they're not in a place of coming forward right now, may they 
talk to us at the back of the church at the end of service. Or may they come back next Sabbath and at some point soon make their calling and their election sure. So Lord God, we thank you for this season. For all of us have something, yea, many things to be thankful for. Help us, Lord God, over these next 21 days to perform acts of kindness that are random and help us to identify with the feeling and the verification. Help us to sense how good that is to set aside our own affairs, our own agenda, and pay attention to the needs of others. Lord God, we thank you for this word. We pray that it marinates in our spirit the rest of the Sabbath. We pray that you would let it just marinate all week. Bless us to this end, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus and all the believers said amen. Amen. Are you glad you came to church today, saints? Amen. Amen. So at CPC, we take the Great Commission seriously. And evangelism is a big part of who we are and what we do. And so this offering that is being collected now is what we use to share the good news and to honor Jesus' charge to go and tell. And so as you receive the basket, we trust that the good news that you have received, that you will be willing to support, not just with your finances, but also with your time and with your energies. Let us bow our heads before the deacons come forward. Almighty God, we count it an awesome privilege to take forth the good news of salvation we know that your return is imminent and we don't want to be saved alone please Lord as these funds are returned we ask that they will go to build your kingdom and to let men and women know of your soon coming more importantly of the awesome sacrifice that Jesus made for us on Calvary we thank you, we honor you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This afternoon for our evangelism offering, we are going to take it back a little to the old school for offering. So we're gonna sing the Lord is blessing me so as you're generously giving, and when it gets to your part when we break, I expect everyone to participate.
you had not thought about the Lord blessing you, I know you did just now as you sang this song together. Praise God. Uh, we, I do want to just thank, first of all, all of you online as well as in our sanctuary who are here worshiping with us today, uh, Elder Baker, for your message, uh, our praise team and band members and these wonderful Aeolians, and this gentleman here, the, the director, would you come out, please? I need to give you your name. Uh, thank you. Um, we're glad to be here. Uh, my name is Kobe Brown. I'm the student conductor. I'm just glad to um, be able to conduct the Aeolians and just be here. Thank you very much. And Vilroy McBean, if I can just get you to take a quick stand. This is the manager for many years for the Aeolians. And when he told me that Dr. Jason Ferdinand was not going to be here this morning and that a student was going to be directing, I looked at him. <laughs> but thank you. You did a beautiful job. Praise God. If you would now turn your, your attention to the screen for Inside CPC to see what's happening in the life of our church. Happy Sabbath, CPC. Here's what's happening in the life of our church. For 21 days in the month of November, we want to invite you and your family to take on a disposition of thankfulness. God does so much for us each and every day that we can be thankful for. But here's the reality. It's so easy to lose sight of that in the craziness of this life. So we want to reverse that story. Starting next week, we will be preaching and teaching on thankfulness from the book of John. But this doesn't just begin and end with the preaching moment. We'll also be distributing a 21-day thankfulness Bible study guide with helpful questions to prompt thankfulness in your everyday life. I pray that you'll join us on this journey, and I am confident that by the end of it, someone will have a testimony to tell as a result. Young adults, you are invited to a very important discussion on mental health. We'll be talking about dealing with stressful and toxic workplaces as a Christian young adult. This discussion will be led by Michelle Armstead Farr on Friday, November 15th at 7 p.m. Remember to RSVP on CCB and please reach out to youngadults at cpcsda.org or you can email me at garrison at cpcsda.org with any questions. We look forward to fellowshipping with you. In the spirit of giving, the Deaconesses are accepting donations to support less fortunate families for Thanksgiving. Please place your donations in the tithe envelope and mark it Deaconess Thanksgiving Fund. We will accept donations until November 16, 2019. Thank you in advance for your support. The Maddie Wagon is a nonprofit that helps children in the hospital by bringing them toys and wagons for the holidays. We need your help to collect new, unopened gifts and other items you see listed here. Meet the Maddie Wagon team in the lobby on these dates. You can also visit themaddiewagon.org for more information. Service is very important to me in my life as an Oakwood University student. Hi, my name is Monty Newbill, and I'm a graduating senior at Oakwood University and an Army veteran. Oakwood's a service-oriented, historically black university in Huntsville, Alabama. Its motto says it all. Enter to learn and depart to serve. The university offers many opportunities for students, faculty, and staff to show love to our neighbors. We didn't allow our neighbors, who are federal employees, to go hungry during a recent partial government shutdown. We work to improve children's literacy and to make our community a better and beautiful place to live. There are so many other ways students serve. There is just no way I can mention it all. If you care about literacy, homelessness, meals for seniors, youth development, health and wellness, educating our veterans, or eliminating poverty, then show love by designating to Oakwood University CFC. It's that simple. Thank you so much for caring enough to make an impact. That's all we have. We pray that you have a blessed week and we look forward to worshiping with you again next week. 
So we have just a few more acknowledgements. Uh, first of all, I don't see Dr. S there he is, Dr. Cedric Vent. How many of you know Take Six? He's one of the original. Please stand up. Thank you very much. And then the soloist. Uh, where? Yes. Thank you. Beautiful job. Praise God. Praise God. And then the veterans were mentioned earlier, but what we had planned was to make sure that at this point in time, our, our, our church tends to fill up gradually. So those of you who were not here before, we ask that, the, that all veterans please stand in as we uh, celebrate this Veterans Day weekend. Do we have veterans? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the service that you have given to our country and that we have all been blessed by. And then we want to welcome our visitors. If you are visiting with us today, would you, we, we won't embarrass you, just take a quick little stand. Let us know that you're here. Visitors? I know we have visitors here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you visitors. Members that are near, that are near, please do welcome our visitors. And then to let you know that we do have a very special visitors lunch following the service. Uh, we know that if you attend this, you will be blessed. And the ushers in the back as you exit will tell you where to go for that. So thank you. Uh, and then I have one more thing. Thank you. I knew there was something else. Uh, the aliens are going to be in concert this evening at 7 p.m. at Tacoma uh, Park Church. This is a ticketed event, but tickets are still available and can be purchased uh, upon arrival. We know you won't want to miss this. They will also be joined by Pro Musica. We had this group at CPC before, directed by Anwar Artley, so you can only imagine the combination of what that will be. So we encourage you to attend, and thank you again. And uh, Praise Team, if you would please lead us out with the benediction song. Please stand.